What's happening YouTube? Liam Gordon here. Today's a special day because I bought myself a Chemex. Look at that. It's like the ultimate hipster chemistry mad scientist looking. What is that? In honor of buying this new Chemex, I'm gonna clear off this table and put all my coffee paraphernalia on here and just make some like, try and make some cool coffee photos. He doesn't know what's happening. Blue. Hi. Hi. All right, it's now like three weeks later and I definitely let this video sit for a little bit longer than I should have. What I'm gonna do is take you through my process of editing these photos in Lightroom. I don't think it's a particularly complicated process, and I think someone with even a basic understanding of Lightroom is gonna be able to produce some similar types of images. But I think the main takeaway from this video is that you can make interesting photos wherever you are. It doesn't really matter what you're doing. I think a lot of the time I go through Instagram and I see like really cool nature or landscape or like cityscape photos, and it makes me think, oh, I need to go into the city, I wanna take some cool photos there. And sometimes I don't have the luxury of doing that, I've got other things to do, and it's just not a viable option to go into the city. So in this case, I just happened to have a new coffee maker and I was like, this thing looks cool, I'm gonna take photos of it. And like the same thing happened today, I didn't really feel like getting dressed and going into the city. I wanted to finish making this video for a start, but I also bought a new pair of vans and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna take some photos of these. So I went out in my garden, threw them in amongst the flowers, put them on the porch, took photos of them there, and I think I came out with some pretty cool photos at the end of the day. All right, so let's get in the Lightroom and I'll show you what I do with these photos. All right, so we're in Lightroom and these are the four photos that I've chosen to edit, make a little photo series of them. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is hit D and it takes us into the develop module. And starting off with this photo, which I took before I realized that it would probably look better if it had coffee in the Chemex. The first thing that I'm actually gonna do is go down to this tone curve and just create three points in the tone curve here. And then I'm just gonna to come to this one and drop it down slightly, which sort of darkens the contrast in the shadows. And I'm actually gonna take this point here and lift it up. It's like a tiny amount. I don't like a lot of fade in photos, but sometimes a little bit's quite nice. So I'll probably go with like 4.3. And it's like the slightest fade barely noticeable but it just sort of adds to that kind of slightly vintagey tone. And this middle one I probably won't go really anywhere with, maybe just slightly above the midpoint. And then this last one, actually let's just try taking this out, uh, I think that looks pretty good like that. Um, I might just pop another one in here and make it a touch darker, there's almost no difference there. Alright, it looks good at that. Then we're going to go back up and go to temperature, tint, probably good like minus two the exposure i'm just going to add maybe like a quarter of a stop to about there punch up the contrast a bit plus 20. Uh, the highlights i'm going to drop to about there i'm going to bring the shadows up a bit i'm going to add the whites bring the whites up a little probably to about 15 ish about there and just drop the blacks down slightly all right it's looking pretty good at that next thing the clarity I, I used to mess with this a lot i used to put the clarity up quite a lot because i thought i like the sort of like the the graphicness about it and i've went back and forth whether i like it or not so now i tend not to really mess with it too much and sometimes i actually go down low a little bit but never really more than minus 10. i'm gonna go with minus 7 it just kind of softens it up a little bit gives it a little bit more of a dreamy kind of look but so anyways minus 7 seems like a good spot i'm going to skip over the rest of this for now and I'm going to go into the HSL sliders. Under hue, I'm going to make the red a little bit more orange. I'm going to make the 
orange, a little bit more red, which seems counterintuitive. Um, I'm going to put the yellows towards the orange side. I'm going to move the aqua towards the blue side, and then the blue towards the aqua side, which also seems counterintuitive, but I just think it balances them a little bit. So it's kind of a subtle difference we've made there, but um, it gives it more of that orange and teal look, but without going crazy. Under saturation, the whole thing's looking a bit too saturated, so I'll probably bring the reds down a touch, bring the orange, orange down just a little bit as well, bring the yellows down to about 12. I'm going to bring the greens down a lot. There's some bits of green just like hiding in the glass, so I'm going to bring the greens down to about 50. Drop the blue to about minus 40, just going to mute it out a little bit. Seems like there's probably some purples hiding in there, so I'm just going to drop the purple down as well. And I'll probably just leave them again to where it is. For the luminance, I'm just going to pump, bump the orange up a little bit, drop the yellow just a little bit, and bring the blues down as well to about minus 8. Uh, I'm going to enable profile corrections, and it sort of brightens up the edges a bit more than I'd like, so I'm just going to put a little vignette in there. Finally, what I think I'm going to do is just like pop that vibrance up a little bit and I think I'm done. All right, so in this photo, I'd added some coffee into the Chemex and I'd moved it into that sort of like striped sunlight. And I'm actually gonna do the same thing again. I'll start with this tone curve. I actually think I'm gonna bring the highlights just slightly flatten them a little bit just because they're kind of bright at the top of this picture. All right, and temperature, I'm probably gonna leave the temperature where it was pretty much. Um, and tint, I'm gonna just make it slightly more green. I'm gonna leave this exposure where it is on this one. I'm gonna push the contrast up a little bit, which is gonna make it seem really dark. But then I'm gonna bring the highlights down a little bit and bring the shadows up a lot to like 65. Four. The whites, I'll bring them up slightly, and the blacks I'm also going to raise up to about 40, 42. Uh, drop the clarity again a little bit. So in the HSL section, I'm going to go plus 9 on the reds. I'm going to drop the orange down towards the red side again. Bring the yellows to the orange side. And drop the greens down this time because again there's some random greens hiding in there. The aqua towards the blue side again. And then the blue side. Maybe too far with these aquas right there. Alright, the saturation. Maybe red where it is. And bring the orange down a little bit. Bring yellow down as well. Alright, in the saturation I'm going to bring the orange down a little bit. I'm going to bring the yellow down a little bit more. I'm going to desaturate the greens. Bring the aquas down as well to maybe about 30. I'm going to bring the blues way down because there's far too much of it at the bottom there. And drop the purple down a little bit as well. I don't really think there's much magenta in there, but let's just bring it down for a good measure. Under luminance, drop the reds a little bit, drop the oranges a little bit as well, and the yellows down to maybe about there. Raise the luminance to green a little bit. That'll just sort of like brighten it so it's not as obviously green. Uh, I'm going to bring the aqua up a little bit to about 17. Bring the blue up to about, about there. Maybe just add a tiny little bit in the purple as well. And hit profile corrections. Just add a touch of vibrance in there. So same idea again, drop a couple points in here, make a little soft, subtle S-curve, just that up a bit, fade the blacks a touch, and just bring some more blacks in here. I don't know what the background noise is going to be like just now, but the dog is messing around with his rope toy, so hopefully it's not like distracting. But anyways, temperature I'm going to bring up here to around about 4100, same as the other ones. Tint, I'm going to actually write on zero is going to be good. Okay, so exposure, I'm just going to bump it up to like just a tiny bit, plus 0.10. Let's add a little bit of contrast to maybe about plus 5. Highlights, we'll drop those down to about 11. We'll raise the shadows up to around about 35, 34 looks good. Drop the clarity down a little bit, about minus 5. I'm actually going to add some vibrance into this picture. And maybe just a touch of overall saturation as well, because we're probably just going to desaturate things as they go through. So, yeah, we're about plus three. Right, so HSL. So, we're starting with the red hue, we're going to go towards the orange side to about 14 looks fine. The orange towards the red side. So let's bring the yellow just a tiny little bit towards the orange side. Then we're gonna go aqua towards the blue again. Blue back towards aqua. There's actually some greens up in the top of the image here. So I'm just gonna make them a bit more yellow just to try and sort of hide them in there. Okay, so saturation, drop the oranges down just a little bit. The yellow's down about 12. Desaturate the greens, try and get rid of that green in the top corner. Um, aqua, 11, blue down to maybe about 20-ish, drop 
purple to yeah, minus 11, just in case there's any purple hiding in there. And magenta's probably fine where it is. There's maybe a little tiny bit of magenta in there, so leave it at minus 2. Uh, luminance, just, let's just take the orange to about plus 4. Slightly brighter. The yellows, yeah, let's drop them to maybe about minus six. And blue, darken that blue a little bit. Minus, minus eight looks about fine. Enable profile corrections. And I'm actually going to bring some of that vignette back into the picture. All right, this um, thing, whatever it's called, this little ball knotted thing, it's kind of the focus of the picture. So I'm going to take a brush tool here and have clarity selected, let's have it about plus 20 clarity and then just brush over the top of that area there and just add, I might put it up to like 25, 26 and you can see the difference, it just sort of like sharpens up that one area while leaving the rest of it kind of dreamy and uh, without the clarity in there. Alright, that's that one, let's call that one done, move on to the last image. This one was like seriously underexposed. Um, I think the light was fading a little bit and I was trying to get just like a, like a glimmer of light coming across the coffee beans here and this blurred out area is the paper filter here and then again in the background and I just got up really close to this one coffee bean here with the macro lens and it didn't really work out how I wanted but I think I can bring it back for the most part. So all I'm going to do is just bring the exposure up to like one and a half, one point, one point six five, which is which is quite a lot. But um, with this camera, it's pretty much doable for for, for some photos at least. And I'm going to bring the temperature up a little bit. It's about four thousand and fifty-ish. That looks fine. I'm going to drop the tint towards the green side. Leave it about plus one. I'm going to lift the contrast to about plus five. I'll leave the rest of it for now. Let's go into the curves. Do the same thing with the tone curve. Bring the shadows down. Bring the mid tones up a bit here. Fade the blacks a bit. Pop these down. What I think we'll do is go into the individual co color channels and just tweak these a little bit. This section of the blue towards. I don't know what you call it when you're on this. So this would be like the the red that's in the shadows, I guess. And you bring it down and it adds green in there. And then you come to the red that would be in the highlight area and lift it up and it brings some red back into the highlights. I think that was too much on there. I just bring it ever so slightly down and then go into the green channel and do the exact same and try and get it pretty much even to where you had the reds there. And it sort of balances it out a little bit. And then with the blue, you bring the blue down, it adds a bit more yellow into the shadows and bring the highlights up and add some blue back into the highlights. I don't know the exact words to explain what it does, but it makes it more contrasty. It looks, it looks, looks good on some photos. I'm not going to mess around with the colors here. I'm just going to go up and I'm going to add a brush again and just add an exposure brush and just brush over this light area here. I want that to be the sort of brightest area, the focus of the photo and I might just brighten it up, that might be too much, brighten it up to about there which is a ridiculous amount from where it started but but this is not like a paid gig, I'm just taking these photos for fun so they'll look fine on Instagram, nobody's going to know that it was underexposed. You can see a bit of noise when you zoom in there but that's like really zooming in, you're never going to see that, you're never going to see that on Instagram and actually I think the last thing that I'm going to do is add some clarity in here as well. I'm just going to take the clarity brush, plus 20 seems fine. And where this bean is, where the focus of the photo is, I'm just going to brush that over there just to sort of sharpen that one area up a little bit. And we'll call that done. And they're ready just to export, airdrop them into your phone and drop them on Instagram. A nice little photo series and it didn't take long to make. Alright, so that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, drop me a comment if you have any thoughts or questions. I'm realizing now that when I took the photos of the vans this morning, I should have made a video out of that. So maybe I will go back out and take more photos of those trainers. Alright, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.